So today we are going to talk about my past, present, and future of books. This is a recent reads, but it is a version of it that is going to be heavily occult detective October themed. There's a couple books I just finished that are for the readathon that I am co-hosting with several awesome people. I will link their channels down below. First one was Moonchild by Alistair Crowley, and this kind of focuses on two different groups of magicians. One of white magic magicians and the other of black magic magicians. Magicians. And you have the White Lodge and the Black Lodge. The White Lodge has this whole idea of creating a moon child. What if you could find and call to a soul that could change the world, that would be of such good and bring about, you know, all these awesome magical things. And so the White Lodge finds this woman and then she decides she wants to take part in the ritual. So there's a lot of a ritual and magic and occult that goes on in it and a lot of different principles. So she becomes pregnant with his child and then the Black Lodge this whole time is trying to like capture her and get her and use her for their own devices and whatnot. And they're all very evil like dog eat dog. It's also very political. There's a lot of politics in this book. But it also on top of that it feels so untapped tethered to reality like the story just kind of like floats and it feels like it's just missing chunks of stuff that should be included to like tether it. I don't know if it was just writing back in the days like in the 1900s because it was like 1917 when it was first written but the story it parts it loses you and just kind of like drifts. <laughs> so they're fighting over this woman and the White Lodge is protecting her and trying to have her, you know, meditate on the moon and do all these things to bring in the goodness and focus on the goddess Artemis and all this stuff. And so you have that. So what ends up happening, and if you don't want a spoiler for this, skip ahead like 30 seconds or a minute. The Black Lodge ends up capturing her and then the guy who had started this whole like moon child great experiment was like, all right, cool, whatever. And then they just don't even care. He's like, yeah, I knew it was going to fail. <laughs> like, what? What is even going on here? Like the whole big build up and they're like, eh, whatever, who cares? It was just weird. And I know later in life, like Aleister Crowley had like addictions and with drugs and heroin and all that. And I don't know what period of this was before that. It was definitely an interesting read. And if you have any interest in some of the weird occult stuff and the workings of what went on in that man's mind, he had some deeper insights too into some of the stuff and ideals which was very interesting that I found. But yeah, like a lot of the political stuff even could mirror a lot of stuff we're seeing today, which is weird. So that was a weird book. How did I feel about it? I thought it was all right. I, I just like the whole thing though, when they were like, eh, whatever, <laughs> who cares? That was kind of a, like, what? Okay. So then I read a nonfiction book. I read a book about a paranormal investigator, which I would consider a occult detective. And it's called A Life with Ghosts by Steve Gonsalves. And this book is about his career as basically a paranormal investigator. Uh, he was on the show Ghost Hunters, which is still on today. Well, I know they took like a hiatus from like 2016 and then they were picked up again by a different network. And uh, I believe there's a new season. I don't know if there's gonna be another season next year, but anyways, so he's on Ghost Hunters. Like one of the OGs with Jason Hawes and Grant Wilson and Dave Tango and a bunch of other people. And so he talks about like what fascinated him with ghosts in the afterlife growing up and you know seeing some of the movies like Ghostbusters and the Entity, Poltergeist and like that kind of sparking his interest in like weird and paranormal and then his parents were like cool with him going and investigating and sitting in graveyards by himself at night and like going to weird buildings and they really were awesome and encouraged him. Like my parents would never let me do that, but you know, he worked in jewelry with his dad and was a diamond setter. He was a police officer. He was a drummer in a band and then, you know, did paranormal stuff on the side. And then eventually that became like his full-time career at, you know, with 20 plus years of experience. He talks about all the different places that he's investigated, the experiences he's had, just all the weird stuff that's happened, like from like the weird, like shadowy apparitions that he's seen and he hearing voices and then stuff moving and different like weird stuff and it goes through it all and what was cool is the different variety of places that they investigated 
kid that is in this book. You have from like, you know, your typical insane asylums, of course, but then you also have zoos and plantation houses. And they investigated the house that was owned by the doctor. I forget his name. He was the guy that they think was the Black Dahlia murderer. Investigated that house and just like all these crazy locations, the Sloss Furnaces and just so many more. And it's really fascinating and interesting. I love paranormal stuff. So it was right up my alley. And I thought that is definitely falling into the genre of occult detective. So I read those two for Occult Detective October so far. What I'm gonna start tonight, this is the reread that I'm gonna start because it's been so long. I'm restarting the series because there's like five books in the series and I plan to try and read three during the month of October and is Warlock Holmes, A Study in Brimstone. Warlock Holmes is, you know, he's weird. I will read you the little synopsis if you haven't heard this before, it's short. I had mentioned this one in my Occult Detective October uh, recommendation video. Sherlock Holmes is an unparalleled genius who uses the gift of deduction and reason to solve the most vexing of crimes. Warlock Holmes, however, is not. <laughs> He may be a font of arcane power, but frankly, he couldn't deduce his way out of a paper bag. The only thing he's got going for him are the might of a thousand demons, the spirit of Moriarty trapped in his head, and the stalwart companionship of Dr. John Watson, who was always there to guide him through treacherous shoals of Victorian propriety and save him from a gruesome death every now and again. As I said, I've read this before, but I'm gonna reread it. It was just funny and quirky, and I enjoyed my time with this book, so I look forward to getting back into it and then reading the other ones. And then another one that I decided to add in because it was sitting on my bookshelf staring at me, and I figured I might as well read it for Occult Detective October is... Episode 13. This is all about the paranormal. I've been meaning to read this book. I got this a while back. There was a price tag here and I ripped it off. And it looks like it's a little frog. Maybe it doesn't look like that. I don't know. So this is by Craig DeLouis. If you haven't heard of episode 13, we'll read the synopsis, give you a little taste of what it's about. Fade to Black is the newest hit ghost hunting reality TV show led by husband and wife team, Matt and Claire Kirkland. It features a dedicated crew of ghost hunting experts. Episode 13 takes them to every ghost hunter's holy grail, the Paranormal Research Foundation. This crumbling, derelict mansion holds secrets and clues about bizarre experiments that took place there in the 1970s, and it is also undoubtedly haunted. And Matt hopes to use scientific techniques and high-tech gear to prove it. But as the house begins to slowly reveal itself to the crew, proof of the afterlife might not be everything that Matt dreamed of. And I've wanted to read this for a while, so I'm excited to add this into the rotation. I forgot about this, and I probably should have had it in the uh, Call Detective rack video, but didn't, so. It's in this one. And also, if you haven't seen that video and are interested in some occult detective recommendations, I'll link that down below if you want to check it out. If you're interested in any of these books, I'll have links to them down below as well. Those are affiliate links, which is a great way to support the channel and to support indie bookstores. Okay, and one more book I'm going to throw in here. It's not occult related, but I've been wanting to read this book for a while and it just came in from the library and I'm super excited. We're shoving it in this month. I don't care. It's happening. Whale Fall by Daniel Krauss. I'm super stoked to read this. All I know is it's kind of probably like the whole Jonah and the whale thing going on, right? You know, guy gets swallowed by a whale. I mean, that's that's what this picture is telling me. I literally have not read the synopsis. I love the cover and I have heard really good things. So let's find out together. What is this about? Here we go. Story time is in. Jay Gardner has given himself a fool's errand to find the remains of his deceased father in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Monastery Beach. He knows it's a long shot, but Jay feels it's the only way for him to lift the weight of guilt he has carried since his dad's death by suicide the previous year. The dive begins well enough, but the sudden appearance of a giant squid puts Jay in very real jeopardy, made infinitely worse by the arrival of a sperm whale looking to feed. Suddenly, Jay is caught in the squid's tentacles and drawn into the whale's mouth, where he is pulled into the first of its four stomachs. He quickly realizes he has only one hour before his oxygen runs out. One hour to defeat his demons and escape the belly of a whale. <laughs> what? It's gonna be crazy. This is a story of biblical proportions. I'm surprised that no one has done a story based 
on something like that until now. Outside of obviously the Bible story of Jonah and the whale. And while it may not be a cult detective, I don't care. I'm shoving this one in there because I've wanted to read it for a while and I've been waiting for this to come in at the library for a hot minute. So I'm super excited to read that. And there will definitely be a standalone review for this coming in the future. So what has everyone been reading recently? What are you guys reading this spooky season? Are you taking part in a cult detective October or just, you know, reading spooky stuff or not even reading spooky stuff? Just what kind of books are you reading? What have you really liked recently? Let me know down in the comments. And if you want to hear more about Occult Detective October, the next video coming up is going to be the uh, recommendation video that I did if you haven't had a chance to see that yet. So stick around, check it out. And if you have fun hanging out today, hit that subscribe button, come back, see me again, and we'll talk about more bookish things and weird stuff.